Hello children, welcome to your reading lesson today. For today's reading lesson, you're going to need your text, uh, the line, the witch and the wardrobe text. You'll also need a Garden of Eden text, which you can find in your work packs. You will need a pencil, a highlighter and your home learning book. Okay, so before we start reading uh, today's part of the text, I would like you to pause the video here and read chapter one of The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe independently. Okay, great. So now we're ready to start doing today's reading. Okay, so we're going to pick it up on page 17, which is the start of chapter two. And it says, what Lucy found there. Good evening, said Lucy, but the fawn was so busy picking up his, its parcels that at first it did not reply. When it had finished, it made her a little bow. So he went like this, lowering his head. Good evening, good evening, said the fawn. Excuse me, I don't want to be inquisitive, but should I be right in thinking that you are a daughter of Eve? My name's Lucy said she, not quite understanding him. But you are, forgive me, you are what they call a girl, said the fawn. Of course I'm a girl, said Lucy. You are, in fact, human. Of course I'm human, said Lucy, still a little puzzled. I'm a little puzzled too. To be sure, to be sure, said the fawn. How stupid of me, but I've never seen a son of Adam or a daughter of Eve before. I am delighted. Let's just have a little think about that, children. He seems to not recognise that Lucy is a girl, a human girl. And he's saying something about son of Adam and daughter of Eve. So it's all a little bit confusing. Why do you think he's calling her that? Just some thinking time. It is all a little bit confusing, isn't it? So what we need to do to help us to understand is that we need to do some research, okay? So we're going to leave the line, the witch in the wardrobe there, and we are going to go to our other text, the story of the Garden of Eden, okay? So this um, text you can find in your work pack, okay? And we need to read this and go through this so that we can understand better what is happening in the line, the witch and the wardrobe. So what I would like you to do is pause the video now and read this text independently before we go through it together. Okay, now that you've read the text independently, we're going to go through it together. You're going to need your pencils in your writing hand so that you can text mark as we're going along. And your spare hand should be free with your tracking finger ready to follow the text, track the text as we are reading. So let's begin. The story of the Garden of Eden. Many years ago, when God created the earth and all of the plants and creatures that live on it, he created the first man. God made the man out of clay and breathed life into him and called him Adam. Soon, God realized that Adam was lonely as the only one of his kind. So he decided to make a wife for him, or make a wife for Adam. God took one of Adam's ribs and used it to make the first woman whose name was Eve. Okay, so God took one of Adam's ribs, okay? Now your rib, you can find, Okay, if you just touch this area of your body, you should be able to feel your ribs, okay? Now, they are bones that protect your lungs in your body. So, just have a little feel and see if you can feel. And you should be able to feel one rib at the bottom, then a little space, then another rib, then a little space, then another rib. And you should have lots of ribs going up your rib cage. It's called your rib cage. So, what God did is he took one of Adam's ribs and he used that to make him a wife called Eve. Adam and Eve lived in a beautiful paradise that God had created 
called the Garden of Eden. Okay, so the paradise that God created, it's called the Garden of Eden. There were many animals to talk to and play with and all sorts of different fruit trees to eat from. Two of these trees were very special, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God told Adam and Eve they could eat as much fruit from the tree of life as they wanted, but warned, but warned them that they must never ever eat the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. One day, Eve was walking alone in the garden when a serpent whispered to her from a tree. Okay, a serpent is another word for a snake. So underline the word serpent, draw an arrow to some space and text mark snake. One day, Eve was walking alone in the garden when a serpent whispered to her from a tree. The serpent asked Eve, you and Adam eat from all the trees in the garden, but never the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Why don't you eat the fruit from this tree? God has forbidden it. So underline the word forbidden. Let's have a go at saying that. Forbidden. 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 Well done. Forbidden means that they are not allowed not allowed so god has said they're not allowed to eat from it god has forbidden it eve replied if we eat the fruit or even touch it we will die the serpent hissed what did he do you won't die god doesn't want you to eat the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because you will become like him if you do and know good from evil Eve looked at the forbidden fruit and saw that they looked fresh and delicious. Believing the serpent's lie that she would gain God's wisdom. Okay, wisdom. Let's have a go at saying that. Wisdom. Wisdom. Well done. Wisdom. Underline the word and make an arrow to some space. Wisdom is another word for knowledge knowledge so what you know knowing a lot text mark please believing the serpent's lie that she would gain god's wisdom she plucked a piece of fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil and took a bite Seeing that the fruit tasted delicious, she found Adam and told him he should eat the fruit too. But God has forbidden it, Adam said. He said that we would die if we ate the fruit. Eve explained to Adam what the serpent had told her about becoming as wise as God. After eating the fruit, seeing that Eve had not died from eating the fruit, Adam took a piece and ate it too. After they, after they ate the forbidden fruit, they looked at each other and at themselves and they felt ashamed they felt ashamed 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 feeling ashamed means that you are embarrassed because you know you've done something wrong so let's underline the word ashamed draw an arrow to some space and text mark feeling embarrassed because you know you have done something wrong. When they saw that God was coming, Adam and Eve felt guilty for disobeying him. Okay, underline disobey and text mark, not doing as he had asked. Not doing as he had asked, disobey. They were afraid to face him. So they tried to hide, but God already knew that they had eaten the forbidden fruit. He was very angry and disappointed. Adam tried to blame Eve for making him eat the fruit, and Eve blamed the serpent for deceiving her, but they had both still disobeyed him. Okay, let's look at that word deceiving. 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 Okay, the word deceiving means lying 
lying. So Eve blamed the serpent for deceiving her. Eve blamed the serpent for lying to her. But they had both still disobeyed him. God punished Adam and Eve by banishing them from the Garden of Eden. So underline the word banishing. Let's have a go at saying it. My turn, your turn. Banishing. Banishing. Now the word banishing means basically that he kicked them out. He said you can't come back. Okay, so banishing, text mark, kicked them out and they were not allowed to come back. So God punished Adam and Eve by banishing them from the Garden of Eden. Their lives would be difficult outside of paradise and they would have to work very hard just to survive. OK, so ever since then, because that had to happen with Adam and Eve, they used to live in paradise. But now they when they were banished from paradise they had to live on the earth like we live on the earth and they had to work for everything so whereas before they didn't need to work the food was around they didn't have to worry about money or paying bills or doing a job or anything like that they were living in paradise but as they got banished from paradise god sent them down to earth to live and that's why all people now live on earth so if adam and eve were the first people that God made, all other people came from Adam and Eve. They were the parents of all other humans on the earth. Okay, so we need to think about, when we go back thinking about our text again, why the fawn is calling Lucy a daughter of Eve. So we'll just keep that thought in the back of our minds for when we're doing our questions, when we're answering them. OK, now that we've gone through the text together, I would like you to pause the video here and go through the text independently. Read the text on your own. OK, now that you've read the text again on your own, it's time for us to have a look at the independent questions that we're going to be answering today. Now they are retrieval questions, so we're going to be retrieving information directly from the text, okay? So on this side, you will see, on one side you will see your retrieval toolkit. So it's there for you to remind you what you need to do to answer these questions. And on the other side are your questions. There are six questions in total and also a challenge question there. OK, so if you normally do the three star work, you can pause the video now and start to answer those questions using the retrieval toolkit. A few reminders, please. You must restate the question in your answer so that your answer is written in a full sentence. OK, I don't want to see any one word answers. You are not allowed to write any one word answers. You need to restate the question at the beginning of your answer. For example, the first question says, in the story, how was Eve created? So my answer will start with, in the story, Eve was created, and then the answer from the text. OK, so absolutely no one word answers. I would also like you to write your answers in your home learning books and then take a picture to send back as your response. So if you do three star work, you can pause the video now and you can start your questions. OK, if you usually do the one star work and the two star work, you need to make sure you've got your highlighters at the ready because we are going to have a practice at answering these questions using our highlighter method. OK, so in our retrieval toolkit, the first thing we need to do is read the questions and underline the keywords. So the first question says, in the story, how was Eve created? So let's just have a think about which are the keywords in that question. Can you tell me? Wonderful, that's right. So we're going to highlight Eve and we're going to highlight created. OK, 
Number two, skim and scan the text and find the keywords and highlight them. Okay, so I'm going to start on the first line and I'm skimming and scanning the text and looking for that word created and Eve. So looking at the first line, okay, here we go. Many years ago, God created, I've got created there. So read the sentence that contains the keyword and then read the question again. Does your highlighted answer, does your highlighted sentence answer the question? Let's have a look. Many years ago when God created the earth and all of the plants and creatures that lived on it, he created the first man. Is that telling me anything about how Eve was created? No, it's not. So I'm going to move on because it says here, if not, move on. So I'm going to move on. I'm going to find, um, keep going in the text and find the word created again. And I can see another one. He created the first man. Well, that's part of the same sentence. So we know that that's not going to answer our question. So we're going to read on. Soon, start from here. Keep having a look through the text. Okay, and here I've got the keyword Eve. Okay, so... Highlight and read the sentence that contains the key word. Read the question again. Does your highlighted sentence answer the question? Okay, so let's just highlight all of that sentence first of all so we know what we are reading. God realized that Adam was lonely as the only one of his kind, so he decided to make a wife for Adam. God took one of Adam's ribs and used it to make the first woman whose name was Eve, okay? So that makes sense with my question. In the story, how was Eve created? God took one of Adam's ribs and used it to make the first woman whose name was Eve, okay? So what we're going to do is copy out that highlighted sentence as my answer. And that will mean that I am answering in a full sentence also. So the answer to question one, I'm just going to copy out all of this sentence here as my answer. And then I'm going to move on to question two. Where did Adam and Eve live? Okay, where did Adam and Eve live? So first thing I need to do is identify the keywords in that question. So have a look at the question, see what the keywords are, please. Can you tell me? That's right, we're looking at the keyword live. And we know it's where we're looking for where Adam and Eve live. So I'm going to keep on reading and I'm going to try to find my keywords in the text. So I'm going to start from here. Adam and Eve live. Yep, yeah, there's one. There it is, lived. Okay, and now I'm going to highlight the sentence and read the question again to find out if my highlighted sentence answers the question. So the question, where did Adam and Eve live? Adam and Eve lived in a beautiful paradise that God had, create, had created called the Garden of Eden. Now remember, your highlighting is going to be much neater than mine because I'm doing it on screen and you will be doing it neatly on your paper. So yes, that sentence does answer my question. So I can now, in my home learning book, I can copy out all of this sentence in order to answer that question. Where did Adam and Eve live? Adam and Eve lived in a beautiful paradise that God had created called the Garden of Eden. So as long as I copy out all of that sentence as it is in the text, I will be answering my question and it will be answered in a full sentence. Okay, so now children who usually do one star and two star work you can pause the video okay and you can carry on with answering those questions i would like you to write the answers to question one and two before you continue to question three four five and six hope you've enjoyed today's lesson i'll see you tomorrow for another one